afternoon and uh, welcome to the College of Optical Sciences uh, weekly colloquium series. It's my pleasure today to introduce uh, Dr. Yangshe Xie, who was uh, a student here at the College of Optical Sciences in the 1990s, early 1990s. And uh, I had uh, the pleasure of being his uh, PhD thesis advisor. I have had uh, 26 uh, students who graduated in, from my group, and um, many of them were good and they have been successful. But uh, I can say that Yong She is uh, one of the top uh, two students who have uh, graduated from my group. And the other one is also sitting here, uh, our own um, Professor Khan Q. So, um, Young She is uh, extremely bright. He did uh, theoretical work, he did experimental work, and then he went to the industry and he became very successful as a, as a businessman and a technical person at the same time. Uh, he graduated uh, from optical sciences in 96. Then he went to work for a couple of uh, companies in uh, data storage industry and also telecommunication. Eventually, he went uh, to a small startup that he helped to grow to a good size um, telecom company, and he was the president and uh, CTO of uh, Optoplex until um, 2015. So he was there for 15 years, and then um, he sold that company. I think he had about 400 employees in uh, California and uh, China and Taiwan at the time. And um, not only was he um, presiding over the company, but also he was doing all the technical work himself. Um, and then he started the new company, Gumax. And again, he is the CEO and uh, CTO of the new company. And um, he is going to tell us about uh, his work in telecommunication today. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you for my short introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to have the opportunity to present some of my work in the past few years regarding the in the parameter application in the optical communication. So in the data, data transfer, data fiber optic communication, the ultimate goal is to push very high uh, data transfer capacity to fulfill today's uh, rapid demand and uh, bandwidth. We have uh, fiber to the home. We have uh, video on demand. We have all, that, all type of social network. So we need a very high bandwidth. And in order to have very high data transfer capacity, there are two dimensions can achieve this goal. You can either increase the channel number, or you can increase data rate per channel. Uh, this is obvious. And uh, in the parameter, in these two, two areas, have very play very important role. Uh, today I'm going to introduce three types of parameter, used very often in the uh, telecom. The first one we call optical interleaver. This device can double, quadruple, or octopole channel density, uh, which means uh, without change the other condition, you can uh, eight times of uh, uh, fiber transfer capacity. And the second parameter we call delay line parameter. This is the first phase modulated optical network. And with this kind of device, you can enable the data transfer rate from typical uh, 10 gigabits per second to 40 gigabits per, sec per second. And the third one we call coherent uh, hybrid or mixer. Those today's can have 100 gigabits per second or beyond. In a lab, you can demo 400 gigabits per second per channel. It's very high speed trans transformation. In the next few uh, slides, I will give a very brief introduction on the DWN network. So in the fiber, 
communication. There is certain wavelength range from about 1525 to 1565, which crossed about 40 nanometer, we call C-band. And this is the most uh, popular used uh, wavelength to carry the information. Because in this range, the uh, fiber material have a smallest uh, absorption. Because we are talking about transfer data for uh, a few thousand kilometers. So the low absorption is very important. And C-band is uh, in the glass range. With, uh, in this range, the, the absorption is minimized. So then with the 40 nanometer range, uh, we need to pack into more wavelengths to have a higher density. So then the important problem is channel spacing. So we have uh, so many channels there. Then if we can shrink the channel spacing, then we get more channel. Now multiply the data rep channel, you get the fiber capacity. So this diagram shows the very uh, simplified uh, fiber DW network. So you have, uh, let's say, Hanzo signal to carry in the fiber link. So typically, you can more than a few hundred or a few thousand kilometers in between. So we need a device called MAX, which can combine all the wavelengths into one fiber. Then in the destination, we are a device called DMAX to separate the, all the wavelengths to, to different locations. And some of them go to the uh, detector, some of them go to the next fiber to propagate to another destination. So then in today's conventional after network uh, available, each channel can propagate 100 gigabit per second data rate. And in the C-band, we have about 100 channels, so you can have 100 wavelengths. So total fiber capacity about 10 terabit per second. This is in the commercial network. In the lab, we can do it almost 100 times, 10 times faster. And this is an example of DMAX. This is a very important uh, field technology. So you have a wavelength, let's say hands over, how many get into a, a device. Then you have a, a stack of filter. So when the signal hits the first filter, you drop lambda one. Then you, you, you bounce back to lambda to lambda three. So this kind of device can separate the wavelengths to different locations. So the limitation of the uh, channel number is defined by the filter resolution. So you can, you can make a filter with a 0.1 nanometer resolution. Then you turn it with 0.1 nanometer. In that case, because you are using use the bandwidth with 40 nanometer, you can have a 400 channel in parallel. So the very important technology is the filter technology. How small? you can resolve the wavelengths will determine the, your data capacity. So in today's technology, the cost effective filter technology can allow 0.8 nanometer channel spacing. 0.8 is a, is a, a conventional variable. When I say cost effective means about $10 per US dollar. But when you down to 0.4 nanometer by filter, it will cost you a few hundred dollars. It's not a linear. It's not, say, the filter uh, divided by two in the resolution. The cost double. It's not it's more than double, it's more, 10 times more. Because a lot of uh, um, yield and uh, time to make, make the filter will cost much more expensive. So this standard filter is 0.9 nanometer separation. And this one is uh, commercially available. It's very uh, cost effective. Now we need a technology which can use a very uh, coarse filter, but can separate the fine spacing channel. And the interleaver can serve this function. So with the four X enhancements, uh, is massive uh, deployed by the interleaver technology. So which means uh, if your filter only have 0.8 nanometer resolution, but your channel spacing can be 0.2 nanometer or even smaller. Then how it work? This is a, a function diagram of a wavelength interleaving. Okay, you have other device called inter interleaver. So if you have wavelength come in from left hand side, the two output four will be uh, one three five in the top and two four six in the bottom, which means uh, the signal have separated into two stream. One will be odd, one will be even. So basically, this is a periodic filter. And one input to two outputs. The output will be 
wavelength will be interleaved. And how this can help to reduce the channel spacing? Okay. This is a uh, one stage uh, interleaver plus the demands. So assume you have a, a hundred channel from left hand side coming to the device. And the spacing is 0.4 nanometer. After the interleaver, you have two streams come out. So in the top side is uh, out channel, bottom side is even channel. Now, you can see the spacing in the top side is only 0.8, in the bottom of the 0.8. Then, with a very simple demands, which have a 0.8 nanometer resolution, you can separate all the channel. So this is the most uh, important uh, device in the telecom passive component, which can always uh, double the channel capacity. So if you add the second stage, you can put an assay in, in front, and you can start with the 0.2 nanometer. After interleaving, it becomes 0.4. Then another end interleaving becomes 0.8. So in the end, you always have a confined filter to demand it. Now how to make an interleaver? Uh, this is a very uh, simplified uh, micro interferometer. It's an interferometer with uh, an even arm. So a light signal from left hand side input so be reflected by the beam splitter. So some light go to top arm, some type go to right arm. If the bounce back will be interference in the left side and the bottom side. So you can see in the uh, left hand side, you see the spectrum. It's a monolithic sinusoidal. And uh, for certain wavelengths, if the round trip phase is constructive, you will see the peak. If it's a disruptive, you, you see the bottom. So then you can see the even other, even other, top and bottom. And the sum of energy will be conserved. When the wavelength in the left hand side is constructive, it will be disruptive in, in the bottom side. So in that case, if your wavelength comes from left hand side, if all wavelengths, then the other, other channel wavelength will go to the left depth channel, and uh, even, even when we go to bottom channel. So this is a very simple interleaving technology. It's, a, it's a, um, just a micro interferometer. But in reality, this is not a work in the practical world. The reason is that the filter ship is more like a sinusoidal. The wavelength of the laser transmitter is not always precise. They can off by a few uh, picometer, a few gigahertz. So if the interleaver shape like this, once it's off-center, then it will suffer in insertion loss. So even you can lock the very precisely in the grid, because the signal itself is uh, modulated. It's not a data function. They have some finite bandwidth. So the sum of the information will be truncated by the filter shape. So this is look at work, but in reality, it's not practical. So in order to make this work, we need to modify some uh, design to make it a more flat up type of filter. So how to make it? Uh, this is a new design. We call modified Microsoft. With this kind of slight change on the coating, you can see the spectrum become very flat up and very on the top and bottom. So in the regular Michelson, this survey is air coated. So you'll see two mirrors, reflect back and interference. But in this new design, we invent, we make a coating in this service, about 15%. Once you make the, feed, make the coating there, the sudden in the other spectrum change become flat up. And the good thing about this one is that uh, if you have a wavelength, say center is uh, here, if it's, even you have some error of wavelength, you still all passed. And even if a spectrum with some width, still covered by the uh, filter shape. So the flat top interleaver is very, very critical. And also it determines all the system performance. Uh, next, I will explain why it works this way. In the right hand side, you can consider this, this is the atlon. It's a mirror, 100% coated, and also some uh, partial reflect coated. You can use 15%, 14%. You can choose some number will change the shape. So then we call this atlon a GT atlon. It's 100% versus uh, certain finite uh, reflectivity. 
So this is a, uh, we call DT etalon. In right hand side is a mirror. Left hand side is a partial reflection coating. So then we calculate the phase of the reflection beam. First of all, this device is a, a mirror in terms of amplitude. Because no matter how you reflect light, because the right hand side is the mirror 100%, so all light will be go back to the left hand side. So in terms of amplitude, it's a mirror. But because you have some kind of multi reflection there, so when they add up together, the phase of the beam will be a function of the frequency. So we take this surface as a reference to calculate the uh, phase. If the coating is zero, you know coating, you not, no, no existing on this surface. So the round trip phase would be linear with the frequency. This is blue line. Blue one is a zero percent coating. It's linear. Now if I put a hundred percent coating here, then the light will not see the second surface. So in that case, all the phase will be constant, will be zero. This will be the uh, this, uh, this, this, this curve. So you can zero, two pi, four pi will be the same. So it's just, just basically constant. So then from zero coating to 100% coating, it will be gradually changed. So you can see that like, uh, uh, 15% coating will be the green. The 50 will be the, the red. So it migrates from the uh, linear curve to the pure, pure state function. So you can visualize how this process works. So now the goal is to create, create a linear face in the right arm. But in the top arm, it's only a mirror, so linear face. OK. Now this explains how the interval works. In the uh, short arm, which is in the top arm, because it's uh, just a mirror, so the return phase will be a linear function of, uh, with frequency. In the right arm, it's a GT at long. It's called, we call long arm. So the phase is non-linear. Now, the interference is determined by the cosine function of the phase difference. So if we subtract these two curves, you get a curve like this. So the goal is to design a coating such that the slope in this section is the same, it's parallel. So when you subtract each other, you get a flat, flat up, it's flat. So then the phase difference will be 0 and pi in this region, 2 pi, uh, 3 pi. So when the phase difference is, is uh, pi, so when you take the cosine function, it will become 0, and it will become uh, 1. So you can see the state type of uh, amplitude response. You can hit the bottom one, just as we discussed. The phase difference is one step. So your, your, your amplitude response will be flat up. And the top one will be a regular micro parameter. The phase difference is linear, so it gets sinusoidal. So then what we need is this kind of uh, uh, intensive response to be an uh, interleaver. If any question, you can, you can raise your hand. Partial reflector? The one that has reflected and came on. Yes. So do you have to do something about its phase? Does it uh, introduce phase into the beam? No, it's a constant phase. So phase is constant. All the phase is, is, a, is a country from the spacing, from atom spacing. And the, the coating is a very thin film. So within like 100 millimeter, the phase is constant. So it's not about the layer coating, it's just a thin film coating. It's thin film coating. It's only a few layers. You can create a 15% reflectivity over like a C band range. And this is a real uh, device. So we uh, used a uh, fuel silica to build the beam splitter. Then use an uh, atalon to build the uh, GT atalon in the right hand side. And another refill in the top hand side. So the tolerance is very tight. Because this device got working for 0 to 70 degree. And the face locking within a few nanometer. So the, the space have to be almost 0 so much expansion. It's a zero though, it's about 0.1 to 0.05 uh, CTE. And because these two surfaces are non-epoxy, if we put the epoxy in, because the polymer has some, some expansion, we destroy the, the all the phase relationship over temperature. So the surface contact is uh, after contact. We do super polishing within like, about one angstrom accuracy, then bound together without, epoxy, uh, without any epoxy. Then 
with some terms of backing, you can bound the two surfaces permanently. So it's, it's a space is zero though. Fuel silica is a very small, small CT, it's 0.5 ppm. It passes free bounding in the service. Then you need to control those, those uh, spacing within a few nanometer accuracy because it, it fits optics, optics. And another thing is that uh, the whole thing got to be sealed hermetically because uh, the air inside the cavity, once it tends to change, the air density changes, you change the index, so change the phase. So the whole thing will be sealed within like a, a laser welding package. Then this is some refined design. We add one more cavity in the right-hand side. So in the left-hand side drawing, you can, in the sunny line, is three cavity interleaver. In the dash line, is the two cavity interleaver. You can see with the three cavity, you can make the transect even more steeper. It's very steep compared to the two cavity. In both are very good, all commercially already deployed. But this is uh, uh, another refined version of interleaver. Just you add more cavity in, you can uh, do the phase cancellation better to make the step even more uh, steep. This is the modeling uh, curve for the transfer function. As you can see, the green one is three cavity. And this is log scale, which means that this is a four order magnitude, only like 0.01% of light leakage. And the top is very flat. It's a, if you, look, you apply the linear scale, it's very like a box. The one thing I need to mention here is that uh, the beam slipper coating in this application is very strict. Because in order to have a very good influence, the beam speed have to be 50-50 uh, for both preparation. Because when, when the customer light come in, you don't know it's P or S. So then the beam speed have to be uh, work for both preparation very precisely, within that 1% error. The even more difficult is the second one. The phase of the transmission beam and the beam have to be independent. Because if you are coating in 45 degree, right, you typically have different uh, polarizing response. If for P-polarizing, the phase is, uh, let's say, uh, 10 degree. For S is 15 degree. Then when incoming light change polarization, your construction is no longer pure construction. Destruction is no, long, is no longer pure destruction. So we make the field shape changes. And for those conditions, got to be covered with 100 nanometer C plus L band and work in a uh, wide temperature range. So in the beginning, when we try to do this device, it, uh, it's almost a very low year, in maybe a 20% year of bin filter, because the, those conditions are very difficult to meet simultaneously. Then we invent a way. It's, it, it, in the end, it's a very, very simple way to do it. Uh, I don't know why it's going now. OK. The, the whole device is a almost a normal instant in each optics. The only thing have prior independence is the beam speeder. It's 45 degree. So then when light come in, in the bottom arm, you can see the uh, transmission to the right-hand side and reflection from the back side are prime. And the other, the other beam, we go to top first with reflection and transmission. So now, when they do interference, the difference will be T cancel out, only R and R prime. So then, ideally, you want to have a R minus R prime is independent of polarization. And this is also very difficult to do it. So then, we make the coating symmetrically, which means R equal R prime. In that case, it's a sufficient condition to have the uh, coating design much easier. So without doing this way, not, if not, not symmetric, you need a 40 layer to, 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 make, to do the job. Once we change it into, into symmetric coating, about nine layer, you can make this very complex bit reader. This is a major data, major spectrum from a real device. It's very similar to the uh, uh, modeling. So it's very uniformly uh, inserting loss and very flat top and also very good uh, isolation. It's about 30 dB down, which means about one over, a point, only 0.1% of the light is the black rate. Random, random polarization, yeah. And also, this, this major, we, we made the data with a different temperature. It, it all works very well. 
this device already deploy, I think, more than 100,000 in the field. Almost each fiber have this kind of device to enhance the, the capacity of the fiber. And this compares of a, of a two cavity divided by tri cavity. So tri cavity, you can have a green one, is more steeper than the two cavity, which which is the blue, blue curve. Okay, in the beginning, when I said a micro inframeter, which means the dimension about less than one inch. So this is the optical core we built. So this is few few glass and zero door, and all the surface is up to contact. Compared with the penny there, so it's uh, the size is about three quarter of inch. Then those is optical core. Then you need to connect to the fiber. So this is uh, how it works. You need two uh, micro lenses, and the fiber come in will be become collimated into the in the parameter. Then the frame pin collected by one fiber output. In the bottom have another fiber. So the whole package, after it's done, is like this. It's about one inch. This is a, a US quarter dollar uh, quarter. So the whole device is like this. This end product. And uh, it's laser the package to ensure that all the air density is fixed. Otherwise, when temperature change, the air, when the air leakage, then it will cause the wavelength drift. Any any question? How much does it cost? Twenty five cents. Huh? <laughs> How much does it cost? <laughs> <laughs> the device, I think, uh, uh, in the beginning, selling for five thousand dollar. Then later on, right now, it's about a few hundred dollar. After we sell many, many, many of them, when the more mature in, in production, yeah. So the conclusion in the interleaver device. So by introducing some proper nonlinear phase in the microscope parameter, the phase difference between the two interference arm can be still step function with step phase pi. So this kind of uh, uh, empty response is the ideal function for the optical interleaver. And this technology enables very super high channel density in DWM network. So we have a demo on that. Use point a nanometer filter. We can use point one nanometer resolution. So 400 channel in same fiber. Use this kind of device to cascade a three a folder. <coughs> and next, a few slides. I'll try to uh, introduce some of the uh, modulation format. So uh, the interleaver, his function is to increase the channel density or reduce the channel spacing. The next two devices is mainly to increase the data rate. So typically, uh, data transfer is used, uh, we call on of key, empty modulation, which means uh, you send the bit one, you turn on laser. Bit zero, you turn off laser. Or on of, on of, then repair the data. But this way, it's not working very well in when your data rate is very high. High means more than 10 gigabits per second. After more than 10 gigabytes, you want to keep the uh, power constant because when power on and off, you have a lot of learning effect. You want to keep the, in the fiber the, all the power is constant. So in that case, you do the phase modulation, keep the power non change. And also, with the phase modulation, you have much better spectral, spectral density, the spectral efficiency. And because of the phase modulation, the detector, the, the photo detector cannot respond. So then you need some device to convert the phase signal into the uh, empty signal, then to decode the signal. There are two types of uh, uh, parameter for phase demodulation. The first one is called delay line parameter. This is a simple device. Uh, it can, it just generates those si uh, signal self beating. You, you don't need a reference light. And the second case, you use a coherent hybrid. In that case, you need uh, some uh, local oscillator to interfere with the signal line to decode the signal. We will see the detail in the next uh, a few pages. So this gives you some idea of, about what's the amplitude modulation and phase modulation. So in the top one, let's say you want to send the signal in the one zero one one zero. It's three bit there. So for the amplitude modulation, you turn on the light, strong, become one, and you turn off the light. 
to almost zero. You get, get, get no light, so one zero, one one zero. Then in terms of uh, the phase modulation, you see that all the power you know change, and uh, you can see when you have a one, you start with a, a passive slope. When you have a zero, your phase jump by pi. So then one zero one one zero. So once you, you, see, you see some phase discontinuity, which means a phase jump, your phase will be changing from zero to pi. This is a binary uh, phase signal. Now we need a way to detect the, the bottom side signal because if you send a signal directly to the power meter, you will see the constant power. This is a uh, simple method to uh, detect the phase signal. You call it delay line parameter. It's how it work. So if a signal from the left hand side is a uh, I phi t, the phi t phi is a, a signal uh, you you carry in the in the fiber. So then you just put a, a bin splitter to set the bin to two paths to top and bottom. Then in the top path you have some put some delay there. The delay time is one bit. Then after that, you combine the two beam to interfere in the two outputs of the interferometer. Then you do differential. You subtract the top by button. What you get will be the cosine of the phase difference. The tau is uh, one bit time. So basically, this device will measure the phase transaction between two adjacent bits. So you don't need any of the uh, other light source. You can use the, light, the signal itself to bit with one, one bit delay, then can, you, can, you can convert the signal into the amplitude. This uh, can give you a better idea. So again, you have a signal 1, 0, 1, 0, right? Then you separate it to, to stream. So in the top pass, you still 1, 0, 1, 0, and bottom pass is the same. But because the bottom pass is uh, no delay, so it's uh, ahead by one bit. So shift by one bit. Then you combine the point B. So then if one and zero face different pi, so it becomes dark. This is one one same face will be bright. So then you convert into the dark, bright, dark, dark. So it becomes empty. Then. So this is how it works, the delay line parameter. So the difficulty here is that uh, you are not only trying to control delay, delay precisely, you want to beat two of the stream. You need to make sure the, uh, the face is matching. You need to make sure the, the, uh, the, the top and bottom are coincident within a, a few degree of face. So typically, you want, you want within a three to five degree. If the face offset too much, then the contrast of the signal will be uh, destroyed. So test of DLI, the delay environment. So 40 gigabit of a signal, uh, one bit about 25 picosecond of time. And this is corresponding to about 7.5 millimeter optical pass length delay. So again, to have the phase matching very well, we need about three degree. So the control within the pass length, we need about, about a few nanometer, across the water temperature range. So a patch device cannot do that. So what we did would be, we make a micro interferometer, okay? Then with a spacer to control the 75 millimeter. And we need some fine tune to lock the face to the carrier frequency. So we put the two silicon in the dry arm and the top arm uh, cavity. Then in one of arm, we put some tiny heater there. So this device is that without and this is all symmetric in terms of uh, uh, glass, other than the air space. So then, when ambient temperature changes, the performance will be the same. Because the ambient change will be the whole thing. And from fine tuning the phase, we use the change of temperature in the, in, in the right arm. In order to have high speed, we need to pick some material like a silicon with a very high thermal conductivity. And you can tune the speed of the temperature changing in about 100 milliseconds. So this is good enough to lock all the uh, signal. Because uh, the phase changing in the network is very slow. So this way, we can build a delay line parameter to fulfill all the application. And the next, we will talk about the third parameter called coherent detection. 
This, again, this is, is used to uh, decode the phase signal. There is some difference between the coherent versus uh, of delay line parameter. For the, cohe for the coherent, uh, it needs a more complex in the parameter to convert the phase into signal, into the amplitude. The second, you need uh, some reference light to interfere with the signal light. The third one, you need a very high speed uh, uh, analog to digital converter and the digital signal part DSP to recover the phase. Number four, you need a, a polarity diversity. Because now you, you interfere with two lights, which is no correlation. So you need to make sure they have a uh, same polarization, otherwise the beating will not work. This is all complicated in, in one to four. But the, the advantage will be five and six. So this will allow multi-level phase. You can have uh, not only zero and pi, you can have uh, pi over eight, pi over four. You can divide them as many as you want. So once your signal is uh, more than your phase noise, you can have a much more level of the signal. The number six is that with the slow oscillator, the bit with the signal, you can use the very strong power of local oscillator to amplify the phase signal. And if the, this is clean, this is a noise-free amplification. Now like EDFA, if EDFA, when you use EDFA to amplify the signal, you have a lot of AC noise. So you, you lost about 5 dB of the signal noise ratio. But use coherent, if your local aspect is very clean, then you can almost no, no noise to amplify the signal. This is the diagram for coherent detection. So basically you have light, signal, and local oscillator coming to the, the system. The signal can be already very weak, come from thousand kilometer away. And the uh, local oscillator is uh, in-house, so it's a very strong laser in local. So first of all, you have PBS, polarizing beam shifter, to separate the, both signal and local into two paths. And you, have, you, you handle the signal X and Y separately, <laughs> because in order to interfere effectively, you need the same polarization. Now after you uh, have a separate polarization, send the signal and local oscillator into the hybrid. This is uh, in the format we are, talk we are talking about in the next few pages. Then after that, you do the signal process. Then you can recover the, the phase signal. So how this is a function diagram of a, a coherent detection. So if a signal coming is I phi t, the phase, phase signal, and with the local oscillator with constant phase, or E L zero. So then uh, this two pin will be interfere in uh, four different locations. So the top one will be direct interference, will be a cosine function of interference. And then second one is a conjugate, v minus cosine. These two, these two interference are uh, conjugate, one plus one minus. And the third one is a, you need to get sine function and minus sine function. So with this four detector, you can recover the uh, phase information. So what it did, what the, the system did would be, you have a, uh, I1 and I2 are both cosine. You subtract to get a L0 cosine omega t. Then the bottom one would be the sine function. So once you have these two uh, signal stream, you send to the ADC and DSP. So by high speed uh, calculation, you can phase will be arctangent, delta Q divided delta I. And another important factor that you can see the signal now is have L0 multiple S0. So L0 is very strong, can be about 30 dB higher, or like a hundred, a thousand times stronger than the signal. So you can magnify the signal by L0. And also, you can solve the uh, phase. And the phase can be many, many level. It's not only the binary. It can be uh, A level or 16 level in the, in, the, in, the, in the 360 degree of phase diagram. And this is how it works. Uh, basically, this is a, a traditional way to, to make it hybrid. Two by four means uh, two in, uh, four output. So basically, you can consider this optic is a, a one by four bin splitter, but it, with 90 degree uh, shifting. So the signal come in, you come to the four place, will be a one by four bin splitter. The local that come in, also go to four place. They interfere, interfere in, in different locations. But you need to introduce a lambda over four delay, which is about 90 degree phase shift then you can go to mass, you, you can solve the, the phase signal. 
this is a traditional way to make it a hybrid with waveguide technology. Then we propose another way to do it is a two by two in mixer. This is a much cost effective and with, uh, with some uh, uh, very interesting uh, interference scheme. So we, we built uh, the mixer with a uh, two in, two out. So it's more like a, a one by two bin splitter. So signal come in, will go to top and bottom. The same thing with local oscillator. So then in the top side, you see the interference will be a cosine function, and the bottom side will be a sine function. Now, because the first two terms are DC, it's a constant. So you, you use the AC coupled circuitry. You can fill out the, the, the AC component. So then with this kind of a scheme, you can save two detectors. Only use two detectors instead of four. You can get the uh, signal recovered. Again, with the AC component uh, pull out from the circuitry, then you can do the tangent. You can get the uh, phase information. Then how the important thing is how to implement this device in a very cost effect effective way. So we built a very special uh, beam combiner. So you have uh, two signal. The signal phase from left hand side and the local oscillator from bottom side. Once you get the interference, in the right hand side is a cosine of the phase difference, plus some phi zero. It's introduced from the beam splitter. Then in the top side, we minus cosine. This is the nature of the energy conservation. You add together, you cancel out all the time dependency. It will be a constant. So the, the signal or the power either go to the right hand side or the, or the top side. So naturally it will be a cosine and the minus cosine. However, in order, in order to make a hybrid work, we need the, uh, in the top side, from minus cosine become a sine function. So you cosine and sine with a 90 degree shift. Then you can use arctangent to solve the phase. So then how we make a bin splitter to be able to convert the, the regular bin splitter situation into a, the specific function we need. This is a simple mix, uh, we will do some analysis. So the signal come in from the left hand side. So then when the reflection, you have some uh, coefficient and pick up some phase from bin splitter. It's phi RB. And the local oscillator from bottom side come in. You also transmission and also pick up some phase from the bin splitter. The same thing in the right hand side. So this is the uh, very fundamental of uh, uh, just to be interference. Now, you calculate the uh, intensity of power on the top loop and the bottom, in the right hand side. You can see the, the, the two equations like that. And to make it a 90 degree uh, phase shift, you need a phase term. You subtract the phase. You need to get uh, it's a pi over 2, 90 degree. So this is determined by the pure the beam splitter. Reflection from the front, front service, and reflection from the back service, and also the phase from the transmission. If the beam splitter coating satisfy this equation, then this beam splitter or beam combiner can be a very effective, very low cost optical uh, hybrid. So we need a, a design a coating to match this condition. So the beam splitter equation is, uh, again, is a phase of the front reflection plus the phase of back reflection subtract by two times the phase of transmission. For a non-absorbing coating, the phase equation should be equal to 180 degree. This is just a simply uh, energy conservation. So which means uh, to have a 90 degree phase shift, you need some absorption to achieve the 90 degree. Now the next question would be to achieve 90 degree of phase, what is the minimum possible absorption? Because if we absorb all the light in kinetic it's useless, right? Because we need to use the light to, to, for the signal, for the signal decoding. So the goal now is to design a 90 degree phase shift, but minima the absorption. And what is the boundary condition? So let's define the, the, the problem uh, in more clear way. So now we want to have, have a constraint with the beam of the phase satisfied pi over two phase shift. 
And because we want to have a uh, evenly spring light beam splitter, so the front reflection, back reflection, and transmission will be roughly the same. And absorption plus transmission plus reflection is equal to one. So under this condition, what's the minimum possible absorption to achieve the goal? So back to the uh, power in the two outputs of the uh, beam combiner. So if you add together, you can get the total power like this. Then the condition will be the output power have to be always less than input power. Because now you can see the, the, the output power is a function of time. It's no longer a constant, like a typical beam splitter with a 180-degree phase shift. So by putting the bounding condition of output power get to be must be less or equal to input power. Then we can solve the equation. You can get the uh, reflectivity got to be less than certain uh, number, or the, the absorption have to be greater than certain number. This is the bounding condition, I mean, which means uh, if you want to get a 90 degree phase shift, uh, the absorption must be greater than some number. Then no way you can make a make free lunch to have a no absorption but get a 90 degree. This is a calculation of the, um, the required uh, absorption. So in order to, if you get 180 degree, you, you don't need absorption, right? And when you're down to 90 degree phase shift, the minimum absorption is about 40, 41%. This is uh, the boundary uh, governed by the, the equation we just derived earlier. So this is the, the goal we can achieve. So with this uh, number to, to guide us, we can design a coating accordingly to uh, fit the requirement. This is the measurement data with the, uh, the mixer we built. So you can see the absorption is about 40% across the, from 1,500 to about 1,600 nanometer wavelengths. And uh, reflection and uh, transmission is about near 30%. This is very close to the uh, theoretical limit we can achieve. This is a major phase across a few points of uh, wavelengths. It's almost all 90 degrees. The, the big, big area, the, the largest is in short wave about one degree, about 89 degrees. But this is uh, uh, performed very well in, to the, in terms of uh, decoding the, the signal. So those work are, are, are covered up by a few patterns in these three different parameters. And that's uh, all I have today. Any question? Hi. So that absorption doesn't give you a problem with the 100 milliwatt 